We are back with King's Quest 3, and we are on the clock. Uh, I saw some people suggest to me that I do hide all. Oh, are you serious? Really? You get on your hands and knees and quickly shove all your possessions under the bed. They will be safe from the wizard's sharp eyes. No kidding. Except for doe and ears, of course. Well, now I'm curious. Take all? Does that work? Retrieve all of your possessions. Wow, it's that easy. Okay, guess I'm doing that. And now I have to wait for Mananen to just be himself. I forgot how long I actually took when I was out adventuring, so I don't know how long I have to wait. But even if you do do everything correctly, it takes time to do it, so we'll we'll see how we get along, I guess. I'll make my way to the dining room just to prepare for the, uh, well, for something fun. Oh, right, I did forget one thing. I may as well take the time to do this anyway. Actually, how, no, that's right. That's right. I'll do this instead. Um, yeah, let's go upstairs. It's fine. If Mananen has anything to complain to me about, then I'll take care of it. I think I have several minutes to do my chores, so feeding him should not take five full minutes. But let me actually grab something from under the bed with that creepy cat watching me. Let's take the porridge back. And take cat cookie. Now if you take a look at our inventory, porridge, and the cat cookie is bad, but put cookie in porridge. The porridge conceals the crippled cookie. It still looks as appetizing as ever. Poisoned porridge. Oh. ho and this does not have a star around it, meaning I can walk around with it. This is going to be the, uh, the big decisive blow, I think. Remember, we spent a lot of the end of the previous stream casting spells. So why don't we go ahead and make this worth it. Again, I don't know when Mananen is getting back. I apologize for that. So I'll just have to chill here in the dining room. Or go back to the kitchen. You know, whatever we got. And once I'm done with this, I'll take all my stuff. I think I've put everything away. At the end of the last stream, I put the wand away. I locked the cabinet and everything. That we should be good. Oh well. Yeah, I'm honestly amazed we didn't try hide all or take all. So am I. I mean, like, whenever I put something away, it's like when I look under the bed, oh, you see your possessions. So I did try typing take possessions or something, and that wasn't quite good enough. But man, this was so much simpler. <laughs> How long is it? I don't remember. Because I, I think we had something like 25 minutes to do our big full task or 30 minutes, whatever it was. But I don't know how far we are into that. And hello there, Fakathon. Welcome to the stream. I am waiting for my wizard friend to eat some poisoned porridge. This one is just right. I can't wait. Except, yes, I can, because I'm obligated to. Look at the glorious candle's flame. Anyway. Oh, well. This jerk of a wizard, what can I say? <laughs> you join us on Operation Poisarage Boo. 
That's all I have to say. Oh well. Everything is fine. I do like how when we hide our possessions, though, we have the poison porridge, obviously, but we also have dough in ears, because they're in our ears. He's not going to find them. And with it, we can presumably hear the language and understand the language of animals, which we have not yet exercised, but we'll be able to do that later. In the meantime, where is this cantankerous old man? The cabinet is locked up. The trap door is closed. I've covered my bases. And I don't think I'm even allowed to really step outside except to feed the chickens. I wonder if I should just do a chore. Like, what else do I have to do? Here, have some animation. Look at me, I'm so diligent. The fast speed makes me take care of it more quickly, even though the clock is moving at normal speed. So I am actually moving in fast motion, which is kind of silly. This isn't the universe, it's just me. Well, actually, it is kind of the universe. It's the universe except for the clock, which is a little weird. So at this point, you have seen me feed the chickens and sweep the kitchen, but not any of my other chores. Actually, that's not true. You've seen me feed Manhattan. Okay, you know what I can do? Actually, wait. His office is down here, right? I think it was his room. It was the top floor. No, no. No, that, that that's his study, not his office. This is how bored I am. I'm doing chores on purpose. Freaking Mananan. Yeah, here's his study. And then if I go up higher, it's the tower, which I am not interested in at this point. So, let's do this. Oh, I forgot he was sleeping. I will not disturb him. I forgot he was home. I was waiting for him to come home, and I forgot. He took a nap when he got home. He's like, I, I'm tired from traveling. I was going to dust his office. It's either that or empty his chamber pot, but they're both in his room, so maybe I'd better not disturb him. Damn it, Manannan. When are you going to be done sleeping? Yeah, just bonk him over the head with a heavy pan. Yeah, he is sleeping. Like, I could just deal with him that way, but this game does not condone violence unless... It's a witch you're pushing into her oven because how that that's that's how that fairy tale went. You could just murder her, that's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, what was the save? Was it F5? Okay, I don't I don't want to screw that up. There we go. Yeah, wizards need sleep to recover their spells. Boy do they ever. Playing a really low level wizard in DD. &D. They cast their one spell. I need to sleep. It's like, ugh, alright. Yeah, get him now while he's vulnerable. I, like, oh, oh, oh. Gwydion, I have awakened. What? No. I am ravenous. Fix me something immediately. Well, watch a pro. Watch a pro. Serve porridge. They're not hungry. I mean, do I have to, like, leave... The kitchen and come back? Ah, Manannan is impatiently waiting for his food. His stomach rumbles as he drums his gnarled fingers on the table. You'd better feed him quickly, or dire consequences may result. Ooh, who's there not hungry? He, he literally is hungry. I forgot how to spell his name. Talk wizard. Don't jabber at me, boy. Bring me my food now, he bellows. Uh, give porridge? They, they are hungry. They are literally hungry. Like, what do you, like, what? Put porridge on table. F fine. 
You place the food on the dining table before the hungry wizard. Ravenously, he devours every bit of it. That actually got me scared for a little bit. And I'm doing this on normal speed so we can properly watch the cutscene. Because I can't move right now. You fooled him! Mananan didn't realize the porridge was tainted and ate the whole bowl! The victory music, like the opening credits music. Congratulations! Mananan will never again enslave you or the people of Lodor! At last, you are free! There we go. I will save because I'm about to do something terrible. You better get on with your quest. Manan is no longer a bother to anyone. I can't even kick the cat. <laughs> but there you go. That takes care of the wizard. What a jerk. Yeah, yeah by the way, Manan was enslaving you and the people of Ludor. I don't know about the townsfolk, but he clearly had enslaved me. Oh, Manan is now Katanan. Oof. All right. <laughs> now, let us resume our speed. Feels good to start the stream with uh, getting rid of all the clock stuff. Well, not all the clock stuff, but almost all of it. There's still another aspect of this game that's timed, but we're through the worst of it. And now I have to awkwardly walk up the stairs. I wonder if a mouse click would do it. I should try that for going down the stairs. But in any case, we've done it. We've dealt with Manan. Take all, baby. That's just a thing I could do, apparently. Boom. Now I got this stuff. Look at me. Okay, moving on. Um, actually, I'll save again, but I don't think I need to go downstairs. I'll try the mouse to see if it works. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> but I don't need to do that anyway, because map. No. Use map. How can you use that which you do not have? Get the hell out of here. Don't do this to me. Do I have to step outside? You open the front door of the house and go outside. Actually, let's try this on for size. Listen to chickens. Shh. If you're quiet, perhaps you'll hear them. I mean... Do I just not move and wait to hear them? Does not do it? Do I stand around or what? I mean, whatever. The magic maps faded ink is brightened, but only in those places where you have been. There we go. So... Was it this area? Okay, I'm in front of the terrifying uh, Demon Souls cave with the giant spider web in front of it. Dip eagle feather in essence. Okay. Boom! Remember I dipped the fly wings? Now I dip the eagle feather. Now I'm an eagle. Look at me. Whoa. How cool is that? Uh, I might need to click where I need to go. There, giant spider when I get close, but you swoop close to the spider web and find a huge spider guarding the entrance. Taking her in your beak, you vow to get rid of her once and for all. Get out of here. Are we just going to drop it in the ocean? <laughs> wow, we're okay. <laughs> Get out of here. Do 
Do I turn back or do I have to say the magic words? Okay, it's wearing off. Hooray! The spider cave is done. We did it. That was really silly, but we did it. Hooray for me, everybody. Now, let's go into the cave that it was guarding. You have entered the cave of the Oracle. What? <laughs> All right. So, hmm. I remember we talked to an Oracle in King's Quest VI. Anyway, you are almost afraid to speak. Whoa. This game took a turn. The Oracle remains silent for a long time. Finally, you hear a hollow voice that seems to come from far away. I've been waiting for you a long time, Gwydion. I have sorrowful news for you. Years ago, a terrible three-headed dragon invaded Daventry. That's where we played in the first game. And keeps the people in a state of terror. The monster requires, once a year, the sacrifice of a young maiden. Oh, it's in the Crystal Ball! It's great! Video games! Cutscenes! That's awesome! Sadly, your own sister, Princess Rosella, is the chosen one for this year. Implying I'm a prince, time is running out for her, your parents, and Daventry. Oh no! I killed a spider for this? Can I move? No, it's still, we're still on the scene. This cannot be allowed to pass. You, Gwydion, the hollow voice continues, are the only one who can save them, but you must hurry. I have something to give you. A small stone of amber. Use it wisely, my friend. The oracle grows silent again and seems to fall into a deep sleep. You attempt to thank the oracle, but the oracle does not respond. That's it. How cool is that? We have an exposition cutscene now? So this, this is where we're at. I have spoken to the oracle. The oracle has spoken. Um, look, map. Ah, uh, oof. I want to see where this was. Maybe not here. Yeah, here we go. Listen, lizards. Maybe if you're quiet. I again, I'll just stand around for a little bit. By the way, now that I've gotten the amber stone, I have a 30-minute clock. This should not be a big deal, but be aware. Do you guys talk or what? Like again, animals. Ah, like I don't get it. It's the same thing with the chickens. Like, I straight, like, do I set it the fastest or what? Let me see if the listening to animals spell has like an activation. No, you just listen around like I don't I don't know how you get this to work. Here's a snake. 
Okay. Can you type wait quietly? Good question. They can't understand you. I know. Ugh. I'm pretty sure I actually cast a spell, too. Like, why wouldn't I have? And I don't even know if the guide says to wait around. Or do you mean, like, you've checked a guide yourself and it says to wait around? Because I ain't hearing a damn thing. This is why I say before doing this. Oh, the guide says to wait around? So just like with the bandits? I was just hanging around the bandits? And they eventually talked. Yeah, maybe if you're quiet. Like, what are you talking about? What I will do is restore my save. Look. Map. Uh, no, here. Bam, bam. I'm here. Here I am. Oh, there it is. Now it worked. It just worked now. You overhear one of the scaly lizards say to the other, There's that boy, Gwydion. You know how he came to be here in Ludor, don't you? No, I haven't heard that story, replies the other lizard. How did he get here? Well, began the other one, when he was a baby, he was stolen from his cradle one night by that awful wizard, Manan, who brought him here and raised him. I hear he treats the boy terribly. That's too bad, comments the second lizard. Hey, exposition. We did it. We we heard the lizards. I am pleased with this turn of events. I, is this random? I don't know. Um, look, map. That was bizarre. I also want to see... Like, I'll, I'll check around Ludor. I need to watch out for bandits, but I also want to see if I could find... Oh, okay, these birds. This might do it. not here. Squirrels. Boom. Uh. Yeah, you guys gonna talk or what? I want to hear the bird. Okay. Your ears perk up as you hear one twittering bird say to her friends, Do you think that young man looks anything like his twin sister in Daventry? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I don't know, but I hear her beauty is legendary, chirps the other bird. Well, he ain't exactly chopped liver either, the first little bird states. Thanks, buddies. I hear squirrels. Do you think they'll help me out? <laughs> this is... That boy over there lives with a terrible wizard, one scampering squirrel remarks to its companion. How awful for him, says the other squirrel. I wonder how he can stand it. Comments the first. I bet he can't. He ought to learn magic. He's got to fight fire with fire. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the gossips. And uh, we could also sort of the chickens. Let me just see if there are other animals. I remember there was a snake. Maybe this is it. Uh, I do need to go back home anyway. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Where's my amber stone? Here it is. Is there a reason I can't, like, look at the amber stone? Didn't that used to be a thing? Whatever. Look, stone. Look, amber stone. The stone is smooth, round, and an unusual color, somewhat like that of amber. Okay. Look, map. Back to the scary mountain path. I will now save again. We need to go back to the laboratory again. Sorry. We'll make this work. Don't worry. But the animals appear to know that I am the brother of Princess Rosella, implying that I am a prince. And notice it said... Good. Notice it said um, this was of Daventry. So Rosella is apparently Graham and Valenice's daughter, implying that I'm Graham's son.
because it said that the uh, the dragon requires a sacrifice each year, but they mentioned Princess Rosella, and unless there are multiple members of royalty in Daventry, that means that Rosella is Graham and Valenice's daughter, and I am her brother, so I am nice. So I am Graham's son and Valenice's son, except that good. I've somehow been stolen by Mananin when I was a child. Freaking ridiculous. Mananin is a jerk. I know we already knew that, but he's super a jerk. Alright, we're almost through this treacherous path. And again, this is my chance to listen to the chickens, I guess. Which is kind of funny. Remember, Gertrude, one of the chickens reminisces, remember how one day the old wizard came out and got her? Oh, I know, clucks the other. It was horrible. I hear she ended up in a stew. I can't bear to think about it. <laughs> Brutal. Anyway, welcome back to the house without Mananin to mess with us, but we technically still are on the clock. Um, I have all my stuff, so I can unlock the cabinet without worry. I carefully relock the cabinet, force of habit, but yeah, got the wands. Move book. Pull lever. And let's save again because this path is still potentially hazardous. I'm still waiting for that cat to troll me, but it just never seems to happen. Not that I'm complaining. Okay, with this, I should have the last ingredient I need. The Amber Stone was what I needed to make the last spell. I had said last time there was no way I could cast the magic spell because I was short on ingredients. This might do it. So let's prepare ourselves a spell. Open page seven. Get ready now. Grind spoon of salt in mortar. You place a spoonful of coarse salt grains in the mortar. Then, using the stone pestle, you grind the salt until it is very fine. Grind mistletoe in mortar. Placing the dried sprig of mistletoe in the stone mortar, you crush it with the pestle. Soon you have a crushed mixture of salt and mistletoe in the mortar. You remove the pestle and lay it aside. Rub stone in mixture. You place the beautiful amber stone in the stone mortar. Very carefully, so as not to miss a single spot, you rub the amber stone around in the mixture of ground salt and mistletoe. When you have finished, you remove the amber stone and discard the remaining powder. Kiss stone. Yep. Smack! And now, everybody, say along with me. With this kiss, I be in part. Power must... Excuse me, most dear. To my heart. Take me now from this place hither. To another place far thither. That is a word. We cool? Oh, right. Wave magic wand. You wave the magic wand over the encrusted amber stone. Successfully completing the spell, you again look at the wizard's laboratory. Hooray, everybody! I've cast the last spell in the game. So if you look at my inventory, it's a little smaller. I still have... No, I think we're good, uh, except for maybe the rose essence. I think I'm done with ingredients, and I don't know if I'll have another use for the thimble or the stone or... Well, the stone's going to be the, the uh, catalyst for the spell, I suppose.
Okay. Look map. Actually, no, it was here, wasn't it? Yeah, we're back in front of the tavern. Look at that shortcut. Open door. We're going in the tavern, everybody. That music. Oh, what do you do with the drunken sailor? <laughs> That's so corny. Good stuff. Count coins. You have four gold coins. Ta uh, one of the rowdy seamen yells to the barmaid. When should come? Oh yeah, right. Talk sailors. The sailors peer at you through bleary eyes and continue swilling their rum. One who looks like the captain pauses and drunkenly slurs, "I, me bucko, be a wanted passage on me ship. What you're running from? Ah, it's no matter. So long as you got gold, let's me see how much you got. Give coins." As you bring out the purse, the captain snatches it from your hand and says, I lad, I sees you do have a wee bit of gold. It's less than me regular fare, but I'll give you a passage anyways. We'll be waiting for you at the wharf, but not for long. The captain and his men down their rum in one long draft, then leave the tavern. There you go. They're gone. Let's go this way. Check this. How cool is this? Like, this game is really, like, expanding the, uh, I don't know about the lore, but just what you do. There are two screens I haven't seen before, above this one and below, but it's just along the coastline. And there's, I guess, one area immediately to the west of the house that doesn't really matter, I don't think. Uh, what was it, F8 leaves? Okay, let's go. I think this is what leaves in like 30 minutes from when I get the stone. Oh, I can board the ship. As the gangplank is drawn in, you hear the captain shout to his men, Take his things and put him in the old... Oh, the hold. And put him in the old until I figures out what to do with him. Damn it! You have a sneaking suspicion that you have made a big mistake. These are pirates. Popeye? Can you do that? Do, 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 do. That's absurd. Nothing like a little salt air to perk up a boy's spirits. All things being equal, you might have enjoyed this ocean voyage. However, you have found your accommodations to be slightly less than satisfactory. And by the way, despite playing the enemy music, this was supposed to happen. And yeah, Falcon Fun, you got me. They did have Batman in King's Quest 2, so fine. <laughs> it's so jaunty oh no, never mind we're done uh welcome to the hold of the ship this sucks i like this view though the see-through view that's clever okay so we got a crate you notice many crates and boxes in the cargo hold one in particular captures your attention for it lies directly under the dangling rope ladder Oh, Dragon Ace, that song is one that the Popeye people took? Maybe it was. I guess I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, take crate. All the large crates are too heavy to move. Well, I mean... Oh, hello. You know the pirates buried treasure? You hear one of the mice say to the other. Right, I forgot I could hear them. What about it? asks the second mouse. Says the first, Well, I just heard the captain talking about it with one of his men. He said it was buried... Now let me see if I can remember. Oh yeah, he said it was buried near a lone palm tree. From the palm, you walk five paces to the east and then start digging. That sounds very important. Too bad we can't do anything about it, muses the other mouse. Why? Even if you could, what are you going to do with gold? Anyway, take crate. Oh, I'm just holding it. Video games. Graphics. I'm trying to go back. Here we go. Drop. Crate. Plunk. Jump on crate. This is really cool.
That's great. I, I just hop onto the crates. That's pretty awesome. Um, jump, climb ladder. I don't even know if I need to type that. Yeah, just, we're up. That's really clever. Oh, that could have been bad. All right. And we got the captain just writing something. Yeah, this, this is no good, actually. There we go. That's better. I don't want the captain here. That could have ended badly. Now let's take a look inside this pretty gorgeous looking room, actually. Open. Trunk. Look. Trunk. You found all of your missing possessions. You take them with you. Sweet. Look at this. I got my stuff. Okay. Let's get out of here. And before climbing up some more, let's go this way. Oh no, one of the crew spotted you. You better run. Damn right. There we go. I, I don't want to be caught. It's hard to see down here, but take shovel. Plunk, got it. Yeah, I guess we'll just go back down. There we go. Yeah, apparently there are multiple ways to leave the ship. Like I could swim, I can teleport, but the problem is my teleport spell, the spell is literally called teleportion, teleportation at random. So if I go back home, for example, which I think could happen, that would be bad. Oh, apparently I could teleport back home. Good. Apparently I could teleport back home, but I could just teleport again. Like I could just keep teleporting, which is pretty silly. But check this out. Look map. This is where I am. Like you could see where the ship is on the map. And it says Route 2 Daventry on it. How freaking awesome is that? I don't like the fact that the captain's here, so let me... I was afraid of that. Dead. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not do that. There we go. I could just wait here. I'm trying to see where I need to be, because it's going to get good. Oh, apparently I can keep rubbing the stone and it teleports me to some place I haven't been before. So I could end up back in Ludor. There are three screens that I have not been to, but I can keep casting until I end up to a new area in the game, which is very clever. It'll skip some clever puzzle solving here, but I could do that, which is actually brilliant. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to climb back down the ladder. Because apparently one of the requirements for casting the spell that I'm going to do is to be in a dark, dank place. And that's where I am right now. I'm in the hold. I'm in the ship's hold. Let me just see what it takes to actually cast the spell. Let 
I'm checking my little guide here. I see brewing a storm, which I don't need to do. Oh, this is so corny. All right. Let me get off the crate, probably to a little fall. Nope, not even. Okay, I think I might be ready. Pour sleep powder on, well, no, I'll not do it yet. I'll not do it yet. First of all, look map. We're cruising, we're cruising. I wonder if speed fastest would actually change anything. I need to get close to Daventry. Yeah, I just need to wait for the ship to reach nearly its destination, and it should be obvious when it's going to happen. I just got to check out my magic words. I need some actual magic words for this. And items, invisibility ointment, empty cup. Yeah, okay. I have what I need. We're slowly moving across that map, but as you can see, there's the coastline way up ahead. I don't know where we actually have to be for this to work, but I'll do what I can. Maybe I can overhear the rats some more. Do you know where the pirates are taking us? One gray mouse asked the other. I heard them talking about a buried treasure chest. The other mouse answers. I think it's buried on a beach. They're going to dig it up. Oh, I remember, squeezed the first mouse. Remember when they first buried the treasure? It was on a small beach. Um, and behind the beach was a huge high mountain range. I remember hearing one pirate say that nobody has ever crossed those mountains alive. Ooh. So much lore. Any more gossip from me, mice? Maybe not. They weren't in the talking mood today. Ooh, almost to the square, though. There we go. Again, I, I, I suspect this is going to be a clock thing versus a, a speed thing. Uh, I heard the pirates talking about bringing a cat on board. No, don't scare me like that, exclaimed the other mouse. Retorts the first. I mean it. They said there's getting to be too many mice on the ship. We need to call a mouse council. A mouncel? And decide what to do about the situation. That's goofy as hell. What do you think the pirates will do with the boy they shanghaied? A little gray mouse squeaks to a companion. But probably make him a cabin boy, answered the other mouse. What happened to the last cabin boy they had? Didn't you hear? They fed him to the sharks just for sport. Oh my god! Ugh. I was gonna say, I'm, go I'm going from a wizard slave to a pirate uh, cabin boy, but like, oh, they'll just kill me for fun. Alright, cool. We're moving. It's, it's too bad there really isn't that much to do on the ship. Like, you stack the crates and you leave, and you get your stuff back, and you're done. I, I, there's the shovel, too, I guess. There's the shovel, too. But these mice really have a lot to say. I'm surprised. Getting this deep lore... All this said, we are getting kind of toward Endgame. Remember, we're approaching Daventry. And the Oracle showed us that we need to help stop this disaster from taking place. We need to save Andromeda. I mean, Rosella. I just don't know... Like, when we're about to see land, I don't know if that's when we're just getting to the land, or if we're on its square, or what. Because we are coming at it at a diagonal. 
But it really is cool that you could kind of cheat and use your map to look at where you are. Any more for me, mice? I love, though, how, like, all the animals in the world seem to know who I am. The mice wouldn't because they're on the ship, but, like, the lizards and the squirrels and the birds are just like, oh, yeah, that's Gwydion. He was captured by the evil wizard Manadin. <laughs> they, they just know. Oh, look at that. Driving me crazy, though, with this ship. Again, I could teleport at random and probably get to where I need a lot faster. But I don't get to put one over on these pirates who captured me. I offer them four gold and then they're like, ha, we're going to make you a cabin boy and then feed you to the freaking sharks. I think I there's a chance I might be able to swim for it too, although that's in a ridiculously long distance. Well, we'll see. We'll see. And there is a process to casting my little spell that I'm, that I'm holding out for. We'll get there. We'll get there. And as you can see, we, we have a lot of points. We're only missing, what, 22, 32. That's not bad. I'm sorry this installment involves more waiting than I thought, but we're generally safe. Mananin's the worst part, and he's over. Moving along that square. Apparently, I do not need to actually change screens for this. This probably is the most immersive King's Quest game, uh, like, of the three so far. Like, with how deep you go into collecting ingredients and using them just right in your spell steps and actually reciting the words for the spell and waving the wand. That whole thing is really cool. And overhearing conversations to get onto a ship, like, that's freaking amazing. But, man, this game makes you wait. Ironically, the better you are at the game, the, the more you're punished for it. Anyway, here are mice. Nothing for me? Maybe I'm actually done overhearing them? I also wonder if the pirate ship had left without me, could I have teleported onto the ship? That would have been kind of funny. It's like, who are you? I'll wait until the clock up top says uh, a minute and 23. Maybe I should check each minute. I know this is very slow and tedious, but we're on a moving ship. What do you want? It's just frustrating because there's only two things for me to actually, well, three things for me to actually do on the ship, and they're very easy to do. So now I'm done. Oh, we're crossing over. We're just entering the square, approaching the land. So let's see what happens at 124. Also, let me see something. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Well, the clock still moves while I'm looking at the map. I don't think the ship's going to move. So, oh well. I'll, I'll tune in at 1 minute and 24 seconds and see if anything comes up. But what I'm waiting for is for the people on the ship to acknowledge that they are approaching land. When that happens, I will be able to hopefully punish them. So, 124 coming up. Let's see how fast we travel across the map from the very line in one minute. A little less than half. Eh. That man, they really make you work for it. I'll still wait just one more minute rather than two, just to make sure. But I'll save after the next minute. In any case, I'll slightly move around for the sake of something happening on the screen. Mice. I hate Mises to pieces? No? Nothing? Okay. Also, I kind of like how 
they say put him in the hold, but like I really have access to the entire bottom of the ship. I mean, I guess that is the hold, but I like I have the whole length of the ship to to cross over and do as I please. And three, two, one, boom. We're nearly there. It looks like it's about three minutes per square. We are close. Which implies it might be another two or three minutes before we get to land. Oh my god. Again, you do not need anywhere near this amount of time. Like, I, I know they can't give you too little time or you're in big trouble, but this is a lot of time. I need to be in the holds to do this, but once it approaches time, we're going to have a good time. Saving because a lot of time has passed. This definitely isn't a time crisis. Speaking of which, I streamed Time Crisis 1, 2, and 3. I never did do uh, Crisis Zone or 4. And I don't think it's possible to do 5 because... Oh! Because that's arcade only, I think. You hear one of the pirates shout, Land ho, Captain! Alright, now watch this very carefully. Pour sleep powder on ground. Okay, can I see it? No, I can't, but that's okay. Slumber, henceforth. As your sleep spell takes effect, a silence suddenly descends over the ship. How do you like that? Finally. So I guess I didn't have to get to land. We just had to approach it. Fast. Did you hear that? That snoring sound? <laughs> there he is. He's just asleep. Let's climb some more. Whoa, yikes. Am I allowed to be up here? Do I keep climbing? Can I just, like, walk off the ladder here? That's... Well, it didn't kill me, but... Yeah, I don't want to go all the way up. Maybe to the right? This, this, this will do. This will do. Good. Yeah, they're all just out. <laughs> and that's how I die. That's so embarrassing. Maybe I'll save after I get stunned. Alright, the, like, the next part's gonna be pretty amazing as well. It says get to the front of the ship. Like, this is, this is good enough, right? Is this not the front? I don't think even touching the pirates will do anything to me, which is good. I didn't mean to fall in the ship, though. So let's let's can I, let's see if I can go around him. All right, if this doesn't work, yeah, I'm swimming for it, baby. I'm swimming. How freaking cool is this? And the Jaws music—it's so corny, but it's working. I'm free. Freaking Jaws music. That's so freaking dumb. Well, I guarantee that wasn't a tune beforehand. Do you think it'll just, like, eat me? I just want to see this. I just want to see it get me. Ah! Oh! Gosh, you barely made a mouthful for that hungry shark. Ah, uh, shucks. Anyway, I've made it to land, ladies and gentlemen. Like, how cool is that? I was on a ship, I put everyone to sleep, I dove off the ship, and I swam for shore. That's pretty cool. And by the way, everyone... Welcome to Daventry. And now, remember what they said? Here's the palm tree. One, two, three, four, five.
How freaking cool is this? I didn't even ask for this. I'm just getting treasure. You've uncovered a small chest. You remove it from the hole and open it. Inside, you find precious gems and ingots of gold and silver. You close the chest and take it and its contents with you. Is that freaking excellence or what? Look, treasure chest. Oh my goodness. The small wooden chest was buried so long that its wood is slightly warped and its brass is tarnished and rusty. Inside are precious gems, gold and silver ingots, pearls and gold coin. How freaking cool is that? All I wanted to do was leave. And now I have treasure. I've solved the mystery of the pirate's treasure. We only have 20 points left. Oh, is this going to be another mountain path I have to carefully navigate? Yeah, let's save again. North. West, if I can get away with it. Yeah, now we're taking the path all the way around this way. Easy does it now. Am I allowed to like climb the rock? I'm not 100% sure about that. Climb rock? Crawl up rock? What's crawl? Eh, I wonder. Oh, I, okay, from the bottom. Tricky, tricky. So I am allowed to do that. That's actually, that's, a, that's interesting. Let's go to the right. Whoa, hello. This is kind of gorgeous looking though. Moving on. All the way right. Ooh, that's cool. Let's take a look at that in normal speed. Look at that flowing water. That actually is kind of cool for the time. I can actually go up the stream, which is badass. Look at this. I'm on a snowy mountain now. That's like, I don't know if I'd call it a twist, but that's very clever. Scary place, but so far everything's fine. I want to try something by running off the screen and back on. <clears throat> yeah, what is this thing? Oh no! It's the abominable snowman! Oh my goodness! The terrible hairy creature grabs you with its bone crunching force. With bone crunching force. You resist, but it's no use. He just takes me to his cave. I'm dead. He carries you away to his cave where you meet an early and unspeakable demise. He killed the hell out of me. Let's not do that. Apparently I could just go. Oh, there he is. Okay. I have to get by him. So you know what I'm going to do? Put Eagle Feather in Essence. Okay. I'm past him now. Oh no, it's the snowman. Yeah, but... You ain't catching me, buddy. Sorry. 
Is there a way to like just lose them? Oh, I say. I don't know if he can grab me from this height. I hope not. He seems confused. He stares in amazement, then heads back to his cave. <laughs> he just had to hell with it. <laughs> Done. The urge to fly and soar is left, so you head for what you hope is a safe place to land. Your magic essence is all gone. I don't think I'm going to need it anymore, but that is potentially scary. Bravely, you grasp the ice-laden rocks and attempt to scale the nearly vertical wall. Be careful, Gwydion. You congratulate yourself on successfully eluding the abominable snowman. Yeah, you're not killing that guy. Well. <laughs> I, I was actually, I actually went off the left side of the wall on purpose because I thought it would drop me into the, the ledge just below there. Maybe I'll save from this point. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Also, this is annoying because this is one of those, like, Lion King on Sega Genesis puzzles. Like, I have to enter these caves in the proper order. Can I just enter the cave? Boy, are these caves dark. Now I have to wait until I come out the right cave. Like, it's not, like, a teleport cave puzzle, but, like, this is all on one screen, and this is genuinely scary. I might want to slow down my walk speed for this. Hmm. Can I just drop... Oh, I can climb. Tricky, tricky. I think it's here. Oh, I fell all the way? Get out of here, dude. Yeah, I can definitely see this being tough. I, okay, like, if this, if this fails many more times, I think I will tweak with the game's speed. I'll save now. I'll save again. Well, I had that one coming. How do I get in the cave? It's like not letting me get in. Maybe that's it? I think I did it. Yeah, now I want to go in the middle cave. Easy now. This is pretty frustrating. This might be the end of it, though, when I do it. Yeah, I'm inexplicably out this way now. I never changed direction when I was doing that. I think I'm done. I think that was it. And now we're on a path.
That was stressful, but I made it through. And we're nearly done with the game, I think. I'll save again. Easy now, but it looks like I'm through the worst of it. I made it past the abominable snowman. Good for me. What a badass. What a hero. Don't worry, that that's scripted. Whoops, you slipped! Yeah, there's absolutely no way to avoid that, I don't think. Easy does it now. A well full of rocks? What? Talk man. You speak directly to the old gnome. He chuckles softly to himself and replies, It's about time you got here, lad. I mean, Prince Alexander. Whoa, what a twist. Welcome home. Heaven knows we need you. Daventry's been suffering for years now since that despicable dragon came. The old gnome narrows his eyes to slits and leans forward on his chair. That monster demanded the sacrifice of your poor sister, Princess Rosella, and I'm afraid time is running out. Your parents, the king and queen, are suffering much grief. They have locked themselves... Oh, they're suffering such grief. They have locked themselves in yon castle and refuse to see anyone. Staring intently at you, the gnome goes on. It's up to you, Alexander. Your country and family need you. It's written in the wind. The wise and gnome relaxes settle, and settles back in his chair. He begins whistling again. There you go. And Dragon Age. I thought Alexander was adopted. I mean, he was still on as a baby, and he came back as an adult, so he was, like, kind of adopted, but not really. Sort of? Maybe? Sort of? Okay, let's go back. That was my deep lore. Yeah, what I want to do is actually go on those stairs. Yeah, he mentions I didn't always have a family, so he didn't know it was him. Yeah, that's that's the twist, baby. Which means that Alexander has in fact talked to two oracles across his travels. Figure that out. And has used two magic maps. Watch out for that first step. It's a dilly. What? A dilly? I've heard doozy, but dilly? Anyway, yeah, we're doing this now. Although, maybe I could cheat. Oh no, they're not going to let me have it. Oh boy. I, I might want to slow my speed for this. But then again, I do get to lean against the wall. Let's save. Freaking nuisance. The mouse click would have been so nice. Yeah, no wonder he could cast so well in six. What? Whoa! Darn those steps. Boy, you're not kidding. I didn't think they freaking cheat. That was on me. I'm getting too impatient, so ironically I'm costing myself more time than saving. Let's save again. Let's save again. But we're approaching endgame now. Uh, whoop. Okay. I can still hug the wall. Or I can die. Darn those steps. Darn those socks. Whew. They're really letting me have it after all this stuff I did with Mananen. Like, the majority of the game was preparing to beat Mananen. And then it was like, yeah, I get on the ship. And now it's like there's no enemies, but the peril is ridiculous. But we're almost out, as you can clearly see. Boom. It feels strangely hot up here. Wait. Is this where the Jack and the Beanstalk dragon used to be? Am I in the land of the clouds? 
I forgot this was a potential entrance there. That's clever. Oh, and what was the tune by the old man? I don't know. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't know. I just want to show you something real quick. Oh my god! <laughs> a huge fire-breathing dragon is here, and it has seen you! Look at those graphics, though. Hypnotized by its baleful glare, you stand frozen in your tracks. What a way to go. Ending up as a dragon's barbecue. Done. Oof. Brutal. <laughs> and Rosella's like, who is that guy? <laughs> that sucks. Thanks for playing. Yeah, no kidding. So watch this. Watch this now. Rub invisibility ointment on body. Okay. Boom. I'm invisible, kind of. Transparency in old video games. And now we get to prepare for my final spell, because even though I set up the teleportation spell, I never did use it. Let's go west. Oh my god. Now watch this. Stir, storm, brew. Stir, storm, brew with finger? Okay. Wow. Brew of storms. Churn it up. That's freaking cool. Bolts of lightning strike the huge dragon. He howls in pain and falls to the ground. Dead. And I think I might have to stop the spell manually. Maybe not, but I'll type it anyway. Brew of Storm. Oh, your magic spell is wearing off. Ugh. Brew of Storm. Clear it up. How can you... Okay, maybe it doesn't matter. Let's save. But how cool is that, this giant dragon? If I go south, by the way, it'll be like King's Quest 1, where I fall through the clouds and die horribly, so let's not do that. The dragon lies dead upon the ground. He was no match for the fury of your magical storm. Untie Rosella. You rapidly untie Princess Rosella from the wooden pole. She looks bewildered as to who her benefactor may be. I'm your long-lost brother, Prince Alexander, you proudly exclaim. The girl looks doubtful. I, I mean... <laughs> I'll explain it all later, you continue, realizing that now is not the time for this. Just follow me. Let's go meet the folks. With mixed emotions, the girl agrees to follow you. Okay. Look, girl. Princess Rosella is gorgeous. Why, you'd be interested in her if she weren't your own sister. Her hair is long, silky, and golden. Her eyes are as blue as the bluest sky. Her skin is creamy white. And her body, well... I'm her brother, so let's make this weird. Embarrassed, you clear her throat and avert your eyes. Don't worry. I'm embarrassed, too, now that I've read that out loud. Uh, now I think I actually have to very carefully walk back down the mountain, which is very cool and not annoying. But she's following me. Sweet pathfinding, Rosella. I, I seriously can't believe I'm doing the stairs again. <sighs> like, like, come on. <laughs> I have to go through all this. Do you think if I fall off, Rosella will be like, what an idiot? Or will she, like, follow me in death because 
old computer game. She, 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 no way. You are not body blocking me, Rosella. Oh my god, Rosella. <laughs> That's less than cool. I'll save before changing screens, I guess. I can't even believe this. I'm going to set it to normal speed so I can do this very carefully. That's right, Rosella. Get the hell back there and don't mess with me. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. And I won't have to worry about her body blocking me for this turn, but I will have to for the grand finale. Good. Now for the grand finale. Let's get down these lousy steps. Darn those steps. She'll just be over there. Don't worry, it's fine. Now see, she found me. And she's body blocking me again, which is very cool and not annoying. Rosella? Rosella? Let's reload. I actually can't believe this. All right, so I'll let her get... Oh, no, she's following me properly this time. Like, we're, we're so close to endgame, and this is what's holding me up. Good, 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 good. First try every time. Let's save, and let's change the speed, because now I don't think I have to worry about being body blocked anymore. We are so close. Although I almost died. Actually, let's bring it back to normal speed now, so any cutscenes can happen at normal speed. Uh, we're out. Oh. Rosella, goddammit. Okay, there we go. Follow me. Let's go back to the gnome. Okay, good. This is where we're going to beat the game. I don't know if I'm going to get all 210 points, but I did a good job. I've never beaten this game before, so I'm quite excited. There he is. Oh, he gets off the chair for this. Oh, yippee! You did it, your majesty! The gnome squeals in delight. I knew you could save us all. King Graham and Queen Valenice will be overjoyed to see you two. He claps his gnarled hands. I must run ahead to announce your arrival. The gnome spryly scampers toward the castle. Do you think this is the Rumpelstiltskin guy? Anyway, there he goes. Is this the Smurf song, actually? That la 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 la. Is that what that is? Anyway, this is where we wrap it up. Hey, it's KQ1. The castle doors are wide open to welcome home a long-missing son and a much-loved daughter. Atop the castle, the banners proudly wave. The heavy feeling of oppression is gone. Hope has at last returned to Daventry. Yay! I could have... Oh, 208. Maybe that's my final score. I could have also given Rosella a brotherly kiss. I don't know if that's points or not, but after that description, I was like, let's just not... You nervously enter the throne room with your sister, Princess Rosella. Hey, look, it's the king and queen. Before the twin thrones, there are now two of them. Stand your parents, King Graham and Queen Valenice. Graham and Valenice are overjoyed to see you. Alexander, where have you been all these years? Your mother exclaims. As your father, I'm so proud of both of you. That sounds kind of like at the end of KQ6. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, kissing on both cheeks? Not bad, considering the pixel work of these uh, characters. What a joyous family reunion. You are home at last. Let me actually look up the, the point breakdown, though. I'm very curious about something. No, there, there are no points for kissing Rosella, so I don't know what I lost points on, but it's fine. Hooray! Hooray! King Graham points to the mirror. That was once a magic mirror, son, he says sadly, but it has been clouded ever since the night you disappeared from, our, from your cradle. How? Why? Well, we know it... Okay, I was going to say it's fixed, because Alexander uses it in the beginning of KQ6. <laughs> 
Before your astonished eyes, the magic mirror clears and shines anew with brilliant clarity. Queen Valenice cries in delight, The terrible dragon is dead! Our children are home and the future looks bright for us all! King Graham lovingly retrieves his adventurer's hat with the red feather. You know the one. Yes. With the motion, he tells you, Alexander, Rosella, this old hat and I have been through a lot together. Now it's time he had a new traveling companion. He flings it in your direction. As awesome as that is, like, we don't use it. <laughs> it's a clever send-off, though. Oh, he throws it! Up and up it gently arcs. You raise your arms to catch it, and so does Princess Rosella. Down it comes, nearer and nearer. The end. Oh, that's cute. It cuts it off before you get to see what happens. But I can tell you this much. The next game stars Rosella herself. We're not playing as Alexander again until KQ6. If you want to see how that goes, I let's play that a long time ago. So that's been on my channel for a while, but that is very satisfying. So the hat's frozen in the air, but the mirror still sparkles. Congratulations on your successful completion of King's Quest 3. We hope you have enjoyed playing as much as we enjoyed creating it for you. May the adventuring continue with King's Quest 4. Okay, I think we're just frozen on this image. We did it, everybody! We beat King's Quest 3, which I've never done. So now I've beaten King's Quest 1 and 3. That's That, that makes up for my lack of having played them in the past. Next up comes King's Quest 4, which I'm quite excited about. So... Uh, Dragon Ace, if we don't play as Alexander as with King's Quest 5, then how do we save the other princess? Well, guess we'll be finding that out eventually. In the meantime, thank you everybody for watching the stream, and have a wonderful night.